Welcome to Complexity Made Simple. My name is Paul Allen and before we get into today's video well I'm just going to remind you the three books that are on sale drink tea and read the paper if you're a green belt and a black belt and you want simple instruction on how to apply your skill design of experiments for 21st century engineers and finally a statistical process control for small batch production. They are all available from lulu.com and the links are in the video below. Welcome to Complexity Made Simple. My name is Paul Allen and the subject of today's video newsletter. Well, what we're going to talk about today is a question from a viewer who's asked me about data collection. How do we create a data collection plan? So data collection plan. So we're going to be talking typically, I'm guessing we're talking about a Six Sigma project. Most of my work <clears throat> and videos are about Six Sigma. So how do you create a data collection plan? Now, what I want to go back to and you should always go back to this is this simple diagram this is the centerpiece of everything that you're doing you have an input output diagram I'll put a few more inputs than outputs And if you really want to create a data collection plan, this would be the thing I would start with. The idea of the input output diagram. Now, before we start, I'm going to talk about the outputs before we start talking about the inputs. Because one of the things that I get a lot is that people turn up with a Six Sigma project and they want to measure the crap out of everything and they want to improve every single feature of the process. So they'll say, well, I want to, I've got efficiency. I've got quality. They might say I've got, uh, they might say I've got OEE. They might talk about on time. Delivery. And they'll turn up with a project, they'll have current performance for each of those, and they'll have a target for each of those, and they'll say, my project is to improve those four things. And the first thing I'm gonna to say to them is, no, that is not your project. That project will be a complete and total balls up if you do that. You won't be able to, to prosecute the project properly. Here's the deal. Pick one, pick one and make it behave itself. Pick one and make it do what you want it to do. Pick one and, and improve its performance. Because if you improve one of these, it's very unlikely you can improve one of these and make the others go to hell in a handbasket. The way that we are going to improve the process, if you pick one, so if you say, oh, I'll pick quality, then when you check efficiency and OEE and on-time delivery, that they will all have improved. You can't improve a process, not with a Six Sigma technique, where we, we're removing variability, remember that. If you pick quality, what are you trying to do? You're trying to remove the variability from the quality. So, the quality will look like that. That's a flipping disaster. What are we trying to do? We're trying to do that. If you do that to quality, you'll do that to efficiency, you'll do that to OE, and you'll do that to the on-time delivery. You can't affect one performance when you tackle variability and not improve the others. Now, you've improved all four there, and that's what you set out to do anyway. But my point is this, if you try to improve all four, when you look this end, 
This diagram would be so complicated, you wouldn't know what the hell you were doing. The reason why we pick one and then we identify the inputs to go and control is because it simplifies what you're gonna do and you're gonna make the whole project a complete success because that's what we always do when I train green belts. We have successful projects. We don't certify unless you have a successful project. Anyway, so let's say we pick one. Then what we're gonna do is we're gonna identify inputs. Now, of course, the inputs could be material coming in, specification one, specification two. It could be uh, settings on the machine, time, temperature, pressure. Uh, what else could it be? It could be quality of the people. So maybe whether they're all trained or not. Okay, so now obviously this is going to be a longer list, but I'm just making a point just to show you how to create a data collection plan. Now, obviously data collection plan, you're going to measure whatever output it is you're trying to, you're, you're trying to transform. I'm guessing you've already got a measurement for it, otherwise you wouldn't be turning up with a project to say I've got a problem. So um, that's the first thing. But in terms of a data collection plan, well, my point would be, what is it that you don't know? What is it that you don't know? So if you look at those, I've got what, six? I've got six inputs there. And you'd say, well, what is it I don't know? And you might say, well, um, you know, you might ask the question, is specification one okay? And you might say, well, we don't know. We told the supplier to supply the material in that it looks like this. And we're not sure that they actually do that. Well, in which case, you're gonna collect information on specification one. By the way, the supplier could be an internal machine. So it could be a machine that you're, you're supplying from a, another part of your manufacturing facility. It doesn't have to be an off-site facility. But you could say, we don't believe that specification one is right. Well, all right, we'll collect some data on it. We know specification two is correct. Well, why do you know that? Well, because we ask for a certificate of conformity for the supplier, and look, we have all the data, and here it is. It's in a, it's in a file, and we've already got it. Well, in which case, I don't need that. You could then go, well, the time is set by the PLC. That can't be moved. Well, in that case, don't need to collect data on that. The temperature, well, we're not sure about the temperature. We think we control it. We have systems that are supposed to control it, but we're not sure whether that works or not. Well, in which case, I better go and collect some, I better go and collect some data on temperature. Um, we know that the pressure is, is correct because we have a, uh, you know, it's automated it's calibrated. So we don't need to collect data on that. Training, well, that's records. And we can go look at that. So in that sense, that's, that's data as well. So you might want to call that data collection. So what do I want to collect data on? Well, use your common sense. What is it you want to know? That's really it. I mean, you, you could make it fancy and you could say, well, we should, we should collect data on everything that's measurable. You could say nonsense like that. But no, you, you're, you're asking the question. I'm trying to control variability. And so what I want to know is, in order to control variability, in order to control outputs, you have to control inputs. And what you're basically saying is, am I certain that I control this? Am I certain that I control this? Am I certain that I control this? And certainty is often about having data or evidence, by the way. So here, look, I'm saying that the pressure is controlled because the system is automatic and the system is calibrated every three months. I'm not gonna collect data on it. I have evidence that I'm happy with it, okay? So you don't need to collect data. What you need to ask yourself is, am I happy that that's controlled or not? 
and in some cases you might need to go and collect data to prove that but you might have other ways that you've decided that you are happy with the control or that you are unhappy with the control. So for example, the operator might say to you, well, I know that the, um, the pressure is automated and calibrated, but when I get on the machine, the pressure gauge is flying all over the place. Well, at that point, you might wanna go and get some evidence as to what the hell's going on. So draw the diagram. This is, this is the crucial thing. Six Sigma is based on physics. Forget the maths for a second. Six Sigma is based on physics. Draw the physics and then say to yourselves, what do I want to know? What am I uncertain about? What do I think is not controlled? And if you think something is not controlled and you're not sure, go collect the data on it. And that's how you develop a, a data collection plan. It's common sense once you put the diagram in front of yourself and once you consider the physics. Data collection plan for a Six Sigma project.